topic of technical analysis of the market and um, I hope that you will find it useful. If you have any questions during the webinar, please don't hesitate to ask them. We have a chat and also you are very welcome to share your opinion, your experience as well. I think that might be interesting for everyone as well. So uh, breakouts, mm, the topic implies that we are talking about some important levels, which um, may be broken by the price. So a breakout occurs when the price goes through a key level of support and resistance. And uh, support and resistance levels, this is of course another big topic and it is possible to speak about that for a long time, the various techniques we use to identify these key levels of the market. Um, here at this slide, I've mm, managed to govern some cases in which breakouts take place most of the times. So um, in the first picture, you can see here a sideways range, then the price uh, spans most of the time between two horizontal levels. And it is clear that uh, the price is not able to remain within this range indefinitely. So at some point it will have to either go beyond the lower border of the range or the upper border of the range. In other words, it will be a breakout. Another case of a breakout is that we have a trend and uh, for some time the price respects the support and resistance lines of the trend. But um, then something happens, a major change in the market and we get a breakout um, out of the break out of this trend. And another case uh, then uh, indeed we have breakouts is when the price forms uh, some specific chart patterns, for example, head and shoulders. Um, what other patterns are there? Double tops, double bottoms, different continuation patterns like triangles as well, wedges, patterns, we can name a lot of them. Uh, in this case, we have some specific shape the price takes and there is often a neckline of the pattern um, like the support or resistance level which once again uh, is broken at some point. So uh, various cases when breakouts take place and uh, you see that every time we do have this important levels of resistance and support and in my opinion um, about I don't know, maybe 80% of successful breakout trading implies uh, finding good uh, levels which will be broken by the price. So, uh, of course, when uh, there is the dynamics between uh, support and resistance lines, um, it is possible that the price won't be able to overcome the resistance or support levels. And if we speak about trends, certainly the logic of a trend is that uh, the price will rebound from support and recoil down from resistance. This is what happens in trend. But at some point, the probability, of course, of a breakout is lower than the probability of continuation. A breakout will happen. And um, well, we identify the key levels of the market. The more important the level of support or resistance is, the bigger the potential movement of the price after a breakout. So uh, you see why we have to put a lot of effort in identifying these levels. Uh, we can use various techniques to locate these magical levels of support and resistance. Uh, what techniques? Uh, some graphic methods like uh, locating previous highs and lows of the price chart like drawing trend lines, like using Fibonacci tools or pivot points instruments. Mm, well, uh, what else about support and resistance? If you have more ideas, you can um, let me know in the chat how you find support and resistance levels. But in my opinion, um, levels which are related to price action are certainly the most powerful things. 
And well, some indicators can give us a hand in this matter. For example, moving averages. Um, some moving averages do form a very good um, support and resistance. So that can be used as well. But um, well, imagine that we have these levels, we have identified them uh, using one of these methods or maybe several. And now the question is, well, trading breakouts, because um, by the way, last time we spoke about trading in ranges, and that is kind of um, the opposite thing to trading breakouts. Um, now we think that the level won't be able to hold the price at some point. So what do we do? Firstly, uh, it is necessary to understand that breakouts can be of two types, false breakouts and real breakouts. So we will start with false breakouts and then switch to real breakouts because I think that it is a more logical thing to do. So uh, here I have prepared uh, some charts for you. You can see that we have a smaller chart on, on the left. Um, and it is actually the weekly chart of Tesla stock. Uh, just to give you an idea that for the last couple of years, the stock traded within the sideways range. And um, here to the right, uh, the daily chart in which we can see the price action in greater detail. And uh, you can see that here the price, it seemed at some point, did make a breakout. Uh, so it is what, what, over here. We even closed below this uh, long-term support level, but then the price mm, spent some candlesticks below that level and went to the upside. And um, the last time I checked uh, a, a few couple of hours ago, it was um, above this line once again. So this is kind of false breakout. Uh, such a situation is also known as a trap for bears. So that uh, the sellers saw that the price closed below an important level and they thought, hooray, it's a great sell signal. We can just um, add to our positions and get beautiful um, big selling targets here. However, you can see that uh, so far, at least, it seems that uh, this was a false breakout. And the question is, well, what, what, how can we identify this situation and make sure that we don't get into this trap? Uh, well, uh, the first thing I'd like to mention that, of course, it is market and there is never 100% uh, certainty that, um, well, a false breakout doesn't happen or that, well, it is a real breakout. Um, in case of false breakouts, it's necessary to understand that even if after, even after a candlestick closed beyond an important level, um, it may return higher. Sometimes um, that happens in case of bear traps or bull traps, um, that the price spends about five or maybe six candlesticks, no, no more than that, uh, beyond the level before it returns to the previous territory. Uh, in this case, we can see that, well, about five, five candlesticks, I guess, and then we are back above that level. So uh, if you see that the price closed below an important mark and it kind of uh, lacks further direction to the downside, as it was in this case, it uh, starts to trade in range just below the level. Um, the possibility that it is indeed uh, a trap certainly is high enough. So either you wait for further confirmation that the market is willing to pursue more downside, um, or you wait for the situation when the price returns be beyond the uh, broken support level, mm -hmm and uh, to the previous territory. Um, if we speak about the range which was uh, broken here falsely, uh, you can see that the general scope of the range is very, very big. 
And the break uh, below such a range implies that the further movement of the price will be significant. So it won't hurt you to wait for a longer period of time um, to make sure that the breakout is real. And well, if you want to enter this market, you can put a pending order, a sell stop uh, below the um, lows formed here and um, use this as your entry trigger, for example. Um, if, however, you see, and if we see today indeed, that uh, Tesla stock managed to fix above the level, it would um, add to the probability that it was a false breakout and uh, that the market will make an attempt to move uh, in the direction which is opposite to the direction of the breakout. I hope that the idea of this thing is clear. This is one uh, one thing we can make about the false breakout, but it is not the only thing we can talk about today. Because actually, uh, from the point of technical analysis, other situations exist which um, pinpoint the situations of false breakouts. And, um, we shouldn't be disappointed in this case. On the other hand, a false breakout is a perfect opportunity to enter the market in the direction opposite to the direction of this false breakout. Uh, let's see uh, how it is organized. Firstly, uh, of course, every trader should monitor pin bars. These candlesticks, which have either long upper shadow or upper week as it is called or the long lower shadow or um, lower week. Uh, the shadow of the candlestick should be uh, significantly longer than the body of the candlesticks. And in this case, it is a pin bar. A pin bar is a sign that the market is no longer willing to continue moving in a particular direction. So here we have this pin bar with the long upper week. It means that the price went to the high of the period, but failed to stay there and has to close uh, at lower levels. So it is a kind of um, small reversal we see on the price chart. And um, this shadow of the pin bar candlestick shows us that it was a false breakout with a very high probability of that it was really so. So uh, we can visually very easy spot this uh, situations on the price chart. And that is a really well um, convenient in my opinion. So um, of course, if this uh, pin bar candlestick is located in the area of some important support and, and resistance level, we see that uh, the price tried to break above this resistance, but then failed, point, uh, formed a pin bar candlestick. And uh, the clue for us is to enter the market in the opposite direction, meaning that the resistance level we are talking about is strong. It uh, managed to hold the price action. And we have a credible um, trade idea on trading the opposite direction of this false breakout. So uh, uh, I see that there is a comment here from Kenneth. Thank you for your feedback. Um, Ishimoku Cloud. Yeah, I like Ishimoku Indicator a lot as well. And indeed, uh, the cloud can act as good support on resistance and the lines, the other lines of the indicator as well. So um, returning to our um, situation with pin bars and um, false breakouts. Um, it is uh, good to monitor the situations at the chart, which are called inside bar. I wonder if I can make this picture a bit bigger. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Probably, oh, probably it is a bit bigger now. So, uh, 
there is a pattern which is called inside bar. I think that you may have heard about it. And an inside bar in simple terms, it is um, the combination of two candlesticks. And the second candlestick is um, completely within the body and uh, the wick of the first candlestick. So inside the second candlestick is inside the first candlestick. It is also easy to spot on the price chart and it is a sign that the market is making a pause um, after some um, directional movement. Um, if after this group of two candlesticks, we uh, see a candlestick, a pin bar, so an attempt to get to one direction, which fails. This combination of three candlesticks, uh, inside bar and a fakey failed breakout, is uh, a credible sign that the market's attempt of a breakout uh, has failed, and we will see a movement in the opposite direction. Um, so in this case, uh, to the downside. So this uh, example, you can see that it is taken from the weekly chart of General Motors. Um, but uh, I think that uh, such situations are not rare um, in any kind of instrument. So um, you will see them naturally. And well, false breakout trading is an option if you spotted it. And here you can see um, an inside bar, but which is um, not followed by a fakie, but it is followed by a strong breakout candlestick. This is, on the uh, other hand, the signal that breakout is real. We went through several levels. We have a candlestick with a powerful, long, full body, which is longer than the average uh, height of body on this chart. So um, this is indeed a sign that the breakout took place, it is a real breakout, and the market will continue for some time in uh, the direction of a breakout. So two different situations, you can see that in one case we have inside bar plus this uh, fakey failed breakout candlestick, and in the second situation we have um, the inside bar group, but followed by the breakout candlestick. So, of course, uh, these are important elements of price action analysis. You can see here we work only with the price, so we don't use some other stuff here. But, um, well, it is always uh, better to have various signs, to have some confirmations. So if you see other signs which can confirm this kind of patterns um, um, and the movement that follows, well, why, why not use it? Um, so I wonder, is it every time here that I should just erase everything? Because regrettably, I don't see the option of just getting it all back. So we have to wait for a moment. And um, at the next slide, we'll have a quick talk about the confirmation of a breakout. So we are now switching from false breakouts to real breakouts, as you can guess. So real breakouts. Um, usually the main criterion of a real breakout is um, the fact that a candlestick, the breakout candlestick, closes beyond the level of support or resistance. Um, I don't think that uh, it is possible to invent a wheel here, and that there is uh, any sense in doing so anyway. It is a simple indicator of a breakout, and the simple doesn't mean that it is bad. Now, on the other hand, it is kind of an um, elegant solution, I would say. So we have the breakout candlestick, which closes beyond the level of support as at this picture. Next, uh, after that, there is some price action. 
And we know that the price may uh, stay close to the level of support for a couple of candlesticks. And in this case, we will fear that it is a trap for bears. We may see that uh, the price um, goes quickly in the direction of the breakout. It is also possible. And we may see the situation when the price returns to the support line, but quickly uh, recoils back to the downside. And the return to the support line is uh, an opportunity to um, open short positions at um, a good le level, which is higher level. Um, in these cases, you can see uh, two scenarios of the market's dynamics after a support breakout. So uh, on the picture we see on the left, we see that the confirmation candlestick closed um, rather far away from the breakout level. Uh, the confirmation candlestick is the second candlestick which comes after the breakout candlestick. So the confirmation candlestick, the second one closed far away, and we see that indeed this market does have a significant bearish momentum. So um, it is possible to, um, to enter the market either on the break of uh, the low of this candlestick or uh, probably see that the price returns closer to the breakout level and then re-enter the market. On the picture we have on the right, we see that the confirmation candlestick closed um, close to the breakout level. In this case, well, uh, we can um, try to bet and enter, enter the market at the current levels, um, hoping that indeed uh, this is uh, the situation, the best level we can get, and the price will then continue in the direction of the breakout. Of course, if the, we see that the price is uh, trading below the support line, but this is only the current candlestick, the breakout candlestick, and it didn't close yet, we are in this situation of great uncertainty because we do not have this signal from price action. Of course, we can check lower time frames uh, in hope that uh, the breakout and the closing of a candlestick already took place there. Uh, but um, that is the question of time frame because, uh, well, the main time frame of analysis, it is, it depends, it um, influences your trade, um, your analysis. So that is, well, a debatable question as well. Mm. I have a question here. Uh, what are my thoughts on waiting for candle close or entering at a trigger? Um, uh, well, I usually wait um, for the breakout candlestick to close um, in most cases. Um, here I would recommend you to consider firstly the size of price action you can expect after a breakout because if you trade um, sideways range, for example, like here, you get an idea of the size of this range, right? So that um, you can kind of uh, see where your targets lie. And um, this allows you to um, have an idea uh, where you can afford to enter the market. Can you afford to wait for some confirmation or maybe um, the price is already close to the target so that you have to decide right away whether to join the market here or, um, well, just uh, miss the trade. Um, my general opinion is that uh, we wait for a breakout candlestick and uh, check momentum, maybe indicators of the market, some volume things to see whether the breakout is credible because the volume will naturally be higher if this is a real breakout. So something like that. And uh, consider the observations of price action, which are listed here at the slide. Uh, of course, market situations are different every time. 
and we do not have a universal solution to this problem. But um, in my opinion, the key uh, thing which Japanese candlesticks provide us with is this idea to understand the psychology of the market. Because um, if we see that indeed um, the market forms strong candlesticks and has momentum, well, it, it is um, a real breakout in this case. If we have uh, some strange uh, candlesticks with small bodies which are clustered here around the support line, well, um, in this case, um, of course, um, the possibility that it is some kind of uh, failure of the market, failure of a break is higher. Let um, me now switch to some other things here. This kind of eraser in this program is a bit crazy. So, yeah, uh, what do we have to consider as well when we trade breakouts? Uh, risk management, of course, we can't just leave this question behind. So uh, what are the main things? First of all, um, you need to understand that breakout trading has specific features because it occurs in times when volatility spikes. Um, breakout doesn't happen uh, just because of nothing. Probably it is some kind of news which is causing this earthquake at the market. Um, so we know that any financial market is, um, well, can be a subject of this news trading. And probably something happened that made the price get beyond the level of support and resistance. And beyond that level, um, probably there are some um, key orders uh, and key positions of large players, these orders get triggered and we see that the price starts moving faster and faster in the direction of a breakout. Um, still, when volatility is high, anything can happen. Risks are certainly bigger than during the times of calm market. And this uh, heightened risks um, lead us to the fact that we need to have risk management, which is appropriate to this situation. So risk reward ratio uh, here, uh, we recommend to have this um, ratio that the reward is higher than the risk and um, reward is significantly higher. So if in uh, the situation of calm market, we can trade with one to two or one to three risk reward ratio for breakout trading it's uh, suitable to regard the risk reward ratios like one to four or one to five. And the logic is pretty simple. Uh, we make a bet that a breakout is real and that the market will get, will make a significant move after a breakout. And if that uh, idea, if that guess is wrong, then um, it is better to just um, get out of this trade and do something else. If this idea is right, then we certainly can't count on a big movement of the price. So we need to have this um, sizable take profit because uh, the price will move fast. And um, the odds are that it will be able to reach uh, the target in the situation. In addition, breakout trading, uh, it is possible to move stop loss uh, order to break even point in order to uh, seal your profit potentially and limit um, the losses because, well, once we are in the break even, we um, do not lose. So we can just uh, continue uh, monitoring the situation and um, making this bet on the breakout. Um, it is also possible to try partially close the trade as the price goes in your favor. That is certainly more difficult to do in breakout trading than during trend trading because um, trend is a more gradual situation and development and breakout 
can be uh, really crazy, this directional fast movement of the price. I don't know um, what comes to my mind. Well, the recent um, maybe earnings report surprise action if we speak about stocks, although there uh, we saw big gaps uh, before anything. And if we speak about currency markets, certainly non-farm payrolls, well, the situation there, not every time uh, we see significant price action and uh, we see less uh, smaller moves uh, on NFP now, but still it is an event that can cause this big movement and, uh, well, so big and so fast movement that um, you have to be prepared in advance to trade this breakout. So this actually leads us to the um, question how to enter the market, what orders to use. Um, of course, if a breakout uh, takes place, it is harder to enter the market with a market order. So at the current price, um, pending orders, of course, are easier because you set them in advance. And here we return to the uh, thing I talked about when we started the webinar, that we actually need to identify these important levels, um, which are really significant for the price. And, uh, well, if we think that a breakout may take place, it is certainly um, possible to place a pending order, sell stop or buy stop beyond these levels. But, of course, we know that uh, we need to uh, put some distance there between the order and the support or resistance line because uh, the false breakout may happen. And after all, um, we name these things as support and resistance levels, but in reality, we never speak about the level, but more about the area where important orders of market players are clustered. So that is um, another thing which should be taken into account. Um, some general uh, recommendations as we uh, um, try to make some summary of the topic and the cases we talked about today. So tips for trading breakouts. First thing, we mark support and resistance levels, um, areas, better on the chart focus on the most important ones because here yeah we uh, significantly uh, develop a strategy for trading breakouts so um, all our actions should be um, related to this purpose firstly we identify the levels because then there are there is no level no area well there will be no breakout it is logical then uh, we can check indicators which um, let us know how volatile the market is uh, we can check Bollinger bands the classic indicator and uh, it is known that uh, bands narrow ahead of a spike in volatility or in other words uh, ahead of a breakout um, there is nothing supernatural about that because um, the situation that Bollinger Bands get closer to each other reflects uh, the general situation when the price consolidates in a narrow range. And uh, after a consolidation, the market often gets in motion, so uh, it is reasonable to expect a breakout. The bigger, the wider the range, the bigger the movement um, can be expected after a breakout. If there is um, a small range, well, uh, probably we won't be able to count on big moves, um, unless, of course, it is a strong trend during which the price consolidated within the narrow range and then continues uh, the movement in line with the trend. In this case, um, we will of course, in the first place, we will see that the possibility of break to the upside is greater and we will bet on a bigger movement of the price after a breakout because we have seen the previous strong trend and uh, the consolidation in the narrow range was merely a stop before a big movement. 
Next, we check economic calendar and economic media. Not all events can be found in the economic calendar. Uh, we know that some events are, um, well, not related to uh, economic indicators as such, but uh, are related to political events, uh, like uh, the trade talks between the United States and China, which take place, um, well, and take time. We can say, uh, and that is the topic of the last couple of months. Uh, sometimes we know that important events related to that happen. So we can expect um, breakouts in uh, assets which are sensitive to risk sentiment during uh, that um, period of time. And that should be checked as well. Brexit, I'm not talking about Brexit, but it's obviously the case when we need to check economic media. Uh, another thing, uh, and I can't um, just um, help mentioning that it is really, really important, it is that you should in no way be in a hurry. Uh, even if breakout trading implies that uh, the events are unfolding really fast, um, hurry won't help you in this situation, it will just um, make you do some stupid things. And uh, if you feel that you are not behaving in the right way, that you your hands are shaking, you want to click the new order button as fast as possible, it is better to take a deep breath and, well, just check uh, whether you are doing the right thing, whether you are sure in what you are doing, uh, because uh, you can lose several seconds. It is not uh, a, fatal, a fatal mistake, but uh, clicking a button and then regretting for some time, depending on what was at stake, is um, a mistake you will regret. So don't be in a hurry, please. Go with chart patterns, not against them. So we have mentioned that important levels can be seen in various chart patterns. We know that there are reversal patterns, there are continuation patterns, and uh, the fact that it is a pattern that uh, this type of price action took place before gives us a hint that the market will see that pattern and try to push the prices in uh, the direction which is presumed by the pattern. So um, it is sensible to uh, put your bet in line with uh, the direction this pattern implies. And um, another thing, the thing which we also discussed today, stick with risk management and make sure that you do make these small adjustments in your risk management um, that will make your breakout trading more beneficial potentially to you and less risky as well. We remember that uh, risks uh, represent the thing which we actually can control in the market and like other things. And uh, it is recommended to uh, really use this opportunity to control something in trading and uh, manage the risks appropriately. So um, I think this is what's, what I wanted to explain you today about breakouts. Um, a question uh, you are asking me about a currency pair British pound versus the Japanese yen. Let's um, try to have a look at the chart, why not? Just give me a second. I will try to open it here and show you my screen so that we can all have a look at this example. I remember I actually monitored this currency pair in the morning. So, so, so. Okay. 
You should be able to see my screen now, I think. It is uploading. Uh, yep. Yep, I see that. Uh, it is working and So yeah, we are looking, we should look at four hour chart, you see. Okay, wow, yeah, I, I understand why I didn't see that kind of because I looked more than four hours ago at this chart. Well, interesting situation, I, I would say. Here, mm, indeed, we have this uh, hammer candlestick near the support line the market is breaking and we have the breakout candlestick so um for now we see that uh, some price action is taking place uh to the downside and well this is a breakout candlestick so the logic tells us that we uh, should kind of see where this candlestick closes i would in this case have a look at Fibonacci levels, wouldn't hurt. Um, so, of course, now um, it wouldn't be very wise to uh, buy at the current level. We see that um, price that obviously met some resistance and uh, it is trying to um, either close above this resistance or maybe pull back and um, we see the support levels also is quite distinctive here we see that it is formed by the previous high some financial level as well so we may see a pullback to this area and um, use this area for buying for example or if we see a more significant and convincing close above this level, uh, we can um, target the return to the previous highs. I would uh, like to have a look at some bigger time frame. Well, uh, moving averages do add some specific uh, levels for us here. Um, and well, I think that if it is a breakout candlestick, um, if it closes above the uh, 140, 6.30 mark we will still have um, some areas to target on the upside but um, the current guess is that before we get uh, higher we will return to the area of the breakout i think that the odds that it will happen are significant or if something dramatically changes and the price leaves these levels and closes below the levels we will make sure that it is indeed a false breakout and the market will just uh, stay uh, below 146, 145, 50 levels. All in all, looking at the daily chart here, we see that uh, moving averages are horizontal. So for now, we do not have the hint that it is um, a break to the upside that does have strong bullish momentum. but um, price action tells us that uh, still the, this position of moving averages at the daily chart, the levels of 147 are quite attainable here. Um, but, well, trading uh, breakout just tells us that it is not wise to um, enter the market with buying at the current level. Actually, I think that. Um, Entering the breakout in the direction of the breakout after uh, the candlestick, the current breakout candlestick is already quite big. It's one of uh, the rookie mistakes in trading, the things which uh, those who just arrived to the market are very vulnerable to because they see, oh my God, 
uh, there is this big bullish candlestick I need to just um, buy right now with the fear of missing out the trade but well it happens um, that they are mistaken so no hurry and we uh, wait for to see what happens let's check one hour time frame now on one hour time frame we see that for now we get this uh, candlestick of the previous hour which failed to close above the resistance we have here so and here by the way moving averages are also be below the price there is significant um, distance between the averages which do not have the strong bullish bias yet so uh, my bet is that we will return to 145 70 area thank you for this fabulous example i just well wouldn't know that that happened here and um, well i would have wondered because the market was rather skeptical about the british pound actually um, in the morning what happened there uh, we need to check obviously something has maybe some news have arrived so uh, I don't think the news are related to Japanese yen uh, uh, oh I, I'm glad that you did manage to um, to leave this uh, uh, selling bad because yeah a big movement of the market and well it was natural to close the selling bad as the price pierced this moving averages um, in this attempt to get higher it's yeah was a great decision because sometimes uh, really people get these questions like um, i have um, a trade and i have a big low loss on a trade uh, should I close it now or should I wait? And it is uh, always very, very difficult to answer a question like that because, well, um, it is necessary to consider the trade and entry and exit levels just um, in advance before a trade is made and not after that. So... Um, So, 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 to make a conclusion, um, I firstly need to remind you about this premium option Tradingall has. Um, so, you can subscribe and get various um, bonuses like personalized learning support and ad free learning experience and a list of options you can see here. Uh, interesting things. So, Please don't hesitate to join if you um, want to have these things. And well, um, I thank you a lot. It was an interesting webinar. Uh, you can check the webinar schedule at Tradimo website because um, I will have more of different webinars. And well, if you are willing to suggest some topics, you are free to do that at, during any webinar as well because. It would be interesting for me to deliver the information which is interesting for you. Um, I, in the future, I will have more topics which are related to technical analysis. I think these are the most interesting things, actually. Um, there is something about trading skills, I guess, and um, fundamentals also are, are not a problem for stock markets, for currency markets. So feel free to join the future webinars and um, have this information about the market. Uh, the recording of the webinar will be available afterwards um, at Tradimo YouTube channel if uh, by any chance you want to rewatch it. And um, in the meantime, guys, um, I'd like to say goodbye to you for today and wish you all the best the great weekend which is lying ahead and um, all the success in trading in your life uh, for your uh, future days to come 
thanks, thank, thank you as well for your kind words and see you at the next webinar, Sweet Trading Mode.